Hello everybody, um, I'm here to talk about understanding Unix through the lens of VIM, in particular VIM as a microcosm of Unix systems. Who am I? My name is Hal. I like um, food, I like programming, they're nice. Uh, what have I made for VIM? Chattery and COQ, one is a text editor, other one is file explorer. That's for most part, how about the projects too? They're pretty cool. Um, so let's just start by examining what is Unix, right? By the first sort of first principle, the design decisions. One, everything's a file, and these files are mostly text. And Unixes are, if you look at it from the perspective of processes, they're a tree of processes. Um, and they talk to each other via the interface um, that's also mostly files. So from this, you also have the immersion property of there's a lot of recursions going on here too. We're examining all of those. So um, let's just start by talking about what makes Vim special, right? There's this idea that when you use Vim, you're rejecting humanity and doing stuff like, well, let me delete three characters to the left or to the right, something like that. But really, uh, that is akin to bodybuilders drinking raw eggs and chicken blending to a smoothie. Respectable, but painful. There's another way of feeling Vim though. It's that since most programs, they are design languages uh, rather than involved ones, their syntax very much reflect the semantics. Therefore, um, you can exploit this correspondence by editing a syntax itself through a library like TreeSitter. And this way, you're very efficient at it. You talk to the machine like as if you as if you are have a you know semantic understanding of it. Um, but here comes the issue. This is not a particularly unique Vim thing. Emacs, Helix, Zed, VS Code, all of these other editors also have integration in TreeSitter. But what Vim really has is something different. Let's just by looking at Unix for a second, right? There is this, Richard Stallman has this proposition that Unix is nothing without its user space, the programs run, that run on them. And if we actually look at what runs on um, these Unixes, right? Look at the programs themselves. They have to drive their behavior from somewhere, which is their configurations. And these configurations, they're informal. They are um, parser dependent, depending on the parser of the programs. So they don't really have a grammar for tree setters to go through. But what they do have is that their design decision for these configurations um, is Ha is limited by what's on your keyboard. So what is a string? It's assigned two quotation marks. And what is a section of text? They're usually between two braces. And Vim um, is really geared towards sort of like understanding this. It's made for it. Um, so let's just look back, take a step back from NeoVim to Vim. If you're looking at Vim Classic, actually it's a program that's very Unixy in that you're highly dependent on other um, Unix program in order to perform its job. For example, grip is needed for search or one mode of search. Uh, you see text needed to understand the text better um, in terms of like their syntax. And yeah, make and unnamed plus minus, which is a clipboard terminal, of course, that lets you have access to everything um, that your Unix system has. And in fact, if you install NeoVim on Windows, it comes with all of the Unix utilities too. And here we can look at sort of an example of the typical Unix communication via a simple bash script. Let me just clear my terminal and run it again. It's a bash script that also happens to recursively call itself and become a um, HTTP server. It's kind of interesting, right? How does it work? Well, it works in that a TCP socket is just a file um, and when your HTTP client, for example, my browser, Safari, pulls from the socket, uh, it actually pulls, pulls in whatever you write to the file on the other side, which my bash script happily spits out a cow. Um, so I have this bash socket bash recursion. Socket, for those of you who don't know what it is, is a program that lets you make, use a script and uh, writes to it via TCP. It's kind of cool. And you have other shell recursions too. For example, if you use SSH, you're actually going from your login shell on your current computer via SSH to SSH daemon uh, the, onto another login shell on the other side. So 
more recursion. And of course, when you have trees, that's a lot more recursion too. So when you have Unix uh, system, PID1, which is the init process, process ID1, has to launch every single process based on its own configurations. And it does so uh, in a way that is hierarchical. So for example, this is the launch D on uh, Mac OS, and this is um, system D on most Linuxes that's relevant anyways. So for Vim, it's actually the same thing. Like, wow, if you look at Vim, the first process that spawns is itself for NeoVim. And you have these plugins and you have these LSP servers that do domain specific stuff, which Vim isn't responsible for. They just talk to each other via this JSON protocol. Or um, in, in terms of plugins, the uh, message pack protocol. And over here, even if you don't care about like Unix system in its root sort of init process, if you ever use Docker, you know, for example, here's a Postgres um, tree of the Postgres spawning itself, splitting itself into different processes. This is a very, very common pattern that's repeated over and over again. So if you're understanding the usage of BIM, it mirrors what's in, the, what's in there in the large. And lastly, Unix is really, uh, unfortunately, it's moving towards to containerization, less sort of multi-tenancy focus. Um, but in a way, its original design is still very like, we have lots of users, they, they have different needs and uh, different wants, and we're, we, we need to make them all live together on the same sort of file system. And if you look at the design of how Vim loads its own configurations, how it drives its own behavior, it's not that dissimilar to system D, which is the init daemon for most Linuxes, drives its own behavior from these set of sort of uh, directories where they read a particular set of configurations that's also in plain text, which Vim also is really good at editing. Anyways, so with all of that said, in my opinion, right, Vim is still not the most Unixy program. What it is, it has to go through M4. This is purely an aside, it's interesting. It's a templating language where it's whose only data structure is a list and it has no loops for templating language, only recursion. So it's really hardcore. Anyways, here concludes my talk. Um, everything is a file, files are multi text, process communicate via files and text therefore. And you have this tree system going on and in understanding how Vim fits into all of this, examining the behavior of BIM, you gain an understanding of Unixes at large. And I think that's it for 10 minutes. Please give me a holler um, if you're in Seattle and you're hiring. Thank you.